In August 2020, Apple upgraded its iMac lineup with the Intel 10th generation processors. Recently, Apple has launched the industry defining M1 chip and has updated its MacBook Pro and MacBook Air. Unfortunately, the iMacs have not been updated. So, if you're now looking to buy an iMac, should you simply wait for the M1 iMac or should you just go ahead and buy the existing ones? This video will help you address that. So let's look at three things. One, how good is the 2020 27 inch iMac? Two, how does the Intel iMac compare to the new M1 chip? And three, should you buy an Intel iMac now and what options do you have? I've now been using my Intel 2020 27 inch iMac for more than 100 days and here are the five key highlights. So firstly, starting with the performance, I went for the starting 6 core 3.1 GHz 10th generation Intel processor and it works without a fuss whatsoever. I've been using that iMac to edit 4K videos, sometimes including multiple camera angles and it does that without a fuss. In fact, to the extent that I have never ever heard the fans starting to roar. And now looking at the Geekbench benchmarks of these Intel iMacs, the 6 core has a single core score of 1174 and it goes up marginally to about 1250 with the 8 core and the higher i9 model. The Geekbench multi-core scores range from 6050 on the 6 core all the way close to 9000 on the i9 model. Now what is important to understand is that just the starting base model the 6 core i5 with 6050 as its core is more than sufficient for 4K editing. Next, let's look at the display. To me personally, the 27 inch 5K Ultra HD Retina display is the main highlight of iMac. It is a great display, the colors are amazing, and the huge 27 inch screen helps me to organize my stuff to the extent that I have not yet experienced the need of having a second display connected. Next, let's look at the upgradable RAM. The base model of iMac comes with the standard 8GB of RAM. That is probably not sufficient for most users. The good news is that it is fully configurable all the way to 128GB. So you can upgrade it all the way from 8GB now to 128GB. And this iMac has a fully user upgradable RAM slot at the rear. Let's get to the ports. If you look at all Apple products, they are deficient in ports. But that's not the case with iMac. It has everything that you would ever want it to have. It has Ethernet 1 gigabit with an option to upgrade to 10 if you really want to. There are four USB 3.0 ports. There are two Thunderbolt ports and you can actually attach two 6K displays to it. There's a high speed SDXC card reader slot. And then there's also a standard 3.5mm audio jack. And at number five, three other small things that make this iMac truly special. The design, 1080p FaceTime camera, and the audio quality. This iMac perhaps has the best audio quality that I've seen on a desktop. Next, let's move to what the M1 chip has to offer and how does it compare to the iMac. So just as comparison for everyone, iMac is the Intel model with the 27 inch display. The new M1 models are the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro and Mac Mini. So let's compare the new M1 chip to the existing iMac models. So as we can see from the Geekbench benchmarks, the M1 chip, even in the starting MacBook Air, is faster than everything that you can see in iMac, starting from the i5 to the 10 core i9 iMac. And it is not just better marginally, it is better by literally 40%. Now moving to the multi-core scores, and this is by the way very relevant for stuff like video editing. You can see that the M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro outperforms 
the 2020-27 inch i5 6 core iMac. It's only when you upgrade to the 8 core or 10 core iMac that you would get faster performance than the starting M1 MacBook Air. And this is really, really astonishing. So overall, from these performance benchmarks, it's very clear that the M1 chip is certainly better than the Intel processors. Now the question is, what should you do now now if you're watching this video and if you're looking at an iMac, what should you do going forward? So clearly, one option is to postpone your iMac purchase till until the time Apple upgrades it with the next M1 chip. And it will certainly worth be the wait. Chances are that Apple will bring not just M1 but possibly the next version of M1 which might be M1X or M2 chip to the iMac. It might have not 8 cores but it might have all the way up to 12 cores including 8 high performance cores versus 4 in M1. Uh, it might also have a new design possibly. The only downside though is that the timelines remain extremely unclear. Surely it will be updated sometime over the next 2 years as Apple has promised but would it be starting of 2021? end of 2021 it remains extremely unclear and considering that apple just updated its imac lineup in august 2020 i personally don't think imacs will be updated anywhere until the end of 2021 timelines being unclear for the m1 imac the other option for you is to simply go and buy the 2020 27 inch intel imac so while the m1 chip clearly outperforms the intel's by a huge margin. It is important to recognize that even the starting 6 core Intel chip is more than sufficient for any form of 4K video editing that you would ever need. And therefore, just going ahead and buying the 27 inch Intel iMac wouldn't be a mistake per se. And option 3 is to simply assemble a M1 powered desktop. The way to get there would be to start with the M1 Mac Mini, which has been updated with the latest M1 chip. Add your existing 4K, 5K monitor, and, or in the worst case, you might have to buy one. Add the keyboard and the mouse, and you might still have to add camera and speakers to get there. The simpler option would be to go for an M1 MacBook Air or Pro, depending on your needs, and simply connect it to an external 4K 27 inch display. From all the benchmarks that we have seen, this combination should deliver you the same performance if not better than the Intel iMacs. So now coming to the final verdict. The best option clearly is to postpone your iMac purchase until the new iMac is launched, possibly in 2021 end. If you have a burning need for an iMac, buying the existing 2020-27 inch Intel iMac wouldn't be an issue at all. I for one, I'm not looking to change or upgrade my iMac anytime soon. If you really do need the extra power of the M1 chip, you can go ahead and create an M1 powered desktop starting either with M1 Mac mini or just connecting an external display to MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. For more such unbiased reviews and for the latest on tech and travel, Subscribe to our channel, Tech in Travel.